Man, there must be a lot of people interested in that A7C. So, on Sunday, I posted a couple of videos just messing around with my new A7C camera. It just came out, so there's a bunch of people that are probably interested in it, but a lot of people watch those videos. At least a lot of people for me, a couple of hundred. Most people don't want to watch a 40-year-old guy taking pictures of his son and doing goofy videos with his friends. So I did people a disservice because I was just messing around with some lenses with no expectation that anyone was going to watch it, except for a couple of my friends who know what's going on with the camera, why I bought it, all the lenses, etc, etc. So in the service of the people that are finding these videos, I thought it would be a good idea to actually talk about my impressions of the camera. Again, I'm a bit of a novice when it comes to cameras, but I am not completely clueless. I am mildly clueless. So I'm going to start with something basic. The box. Focus on that. Focusing on that. Last week I bought a Ronin, a DJI Ronin SC gimbal. And it came in this really nice package. Didn't expect it to come in this nice package. And then I spend $2,000 plus on a camera. And it's in a cardboard box. I mean, not that it needs to be anything fancy, but... I mean, you spend $2,000 on something, it feels like it should be a little bit more premium than box so I have to say my first impression I'm not super impressed even the 20 millimeter lens that I bought came with like a leather bag this didn't come with like with anything it came with kind of a crappy strap didn't mean to start this off with a negative but you know up your box game people or doesn't have to be in a box it could be anything get creative with reusable materials too I don't know I digress People are not here to hear me rant about a freaking box. This is all my opinion, obviously. Professional photographers are going to have a completely different view. But my Sony experience started with a Sony A5100. It's smaller than the Sony A7C. The A7C feels beefy to me. So while people are heralding the A7C for being a small body, it's bigger than what I'm normally used to. I also had a Panasonic G7 and the bodies feel a little bit similar. This G7 was probably bigger, I just sold it, so I couldn't do a comparison. The A7C is not a small camera. It doesn't feel small. The grip and the handle feel fine. It doesn't feel insignificant, or it's lacking weight or gravitas, or whatever you want to call it. The particular model that I got has the silver band up top, which I think looks classy. One of the common threads that I'm hearing as a negative about this camera is why now? Why did Sony release this camera now? It would have been better last year. I don't know anything about the background. I don't know anything about the history of the A7 cameras. But I know that I was looking to either buy an A7 III or now this camera. Why did I pick the A7C? The flip-out screen. My Sony Alpha 5100 and the Panasonic G7 that I had the Alpha flips up, so you could see the screen. The G7 flipped sideways, which is what this camera does, which I don't love as much, but I understand why, because if you want to put a mic up top, you need the space. But it does force me to look to the side every once in a while to make sure that my face doesn't look stupid. But I'm grateful for the side view, so I don't have to plug in another monitor and make creativity time when I want to take the camera out and do something, to have to take that extra step and connect the monitor, that's more time wasted. So I'm grateful that I can just flip this thing open and get started. Another major gripe about this camera seems to be the menu system. 
it sounds like Sony has an upgraded menu system, and they didn't use it on this camera, even though it's a brand new camera. Yeah. The A5100's menu system is confusing as hell. This one feels a little bit more streamlined, even if they're part of the same family. This one seems to be a little bit easier to use. So it took a minute to get used to, to figure stuff out. I looked at a couple of videos for A7 III to get some setting suggestions. And it's working fine. One of the things that I am very happy about is that this camera is using USB-C. So when I'm traveling, my work laptop is USB-C, my personal laptop is USB-C, my work phone is USB-C, my personal phone is USB-C, my headphones are USB-C. So it's nice to have to carry one cable or a limited set of cables to charge your devices. I like that. It's something that I appreciate and I'm glad that they did this. I'm currently filming this video with the 20 millimeter lens, the F1.8 lens that I recently purchased as well. So this is a Sony branded lens. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is this lens looks clean. Um, it's a good wide shot for how close I am to the camera, but um, so far I'm not loving the kit lens that came with the system. I mentioned that in one of the other videos. Everything looks kind of flat. You don't get that good bokeh, but the aforementioned DJI Ronin gimbal, it could come in handy for that device. So I like the fact that it's a lighter weight, smaller lens that I might be able to use for other applications. One of the things that I am struggling with is the custom buttons. And again, it is because I'm a bit of a novice with cameras. I was looking for a rocker to do zoom. The Sony 5100 has that rocker that will let you zoom in and out. This device does not have that. So I found a means of building a custom zoom using your D-pad and you can activate it and then do what you have to do. But it's not built in anywhere on the device on the A7C. That's not great. There's also a lack of custom buttons that a lot of people have been complaining about. I don't really care about that. I do wish there were more custom buttons as I'm getting more used to the system. It'd be nice to have an extra button physically not on the D-pad. I'd like to be able to get into 120 frames per second uh, without having to use the D-pad. I wish there was a dedicated button that I can configure for that. Not a big deal. Again, it's much better than what I came from and what I've started with, but it would be nice to have a couple of more buttons and there is space on this body to put more buttons on. Another gripe is the viewfinder. A lot of people don't like that it's so small. This isn't really an issue for me. I'm not someone who takes a lot of photography and when I do, I use the main screen. In fact, the viewfinder was getting on my nerves. The settings that the camera comes with out of the box, it does that automatic view from the viewfinder to the screen. So as you're tilting the screen or the camera back and forth when you're changing menu items, the screen will randomly go black because the view is going back to the viewfinder. That was driving me crazy. I actually shut it off. Compared to the A5100, this camera is not lightweight to me, but it is small. It's compact. It's something that could probably fit in your pocket without a lens. I don't know why you would want to do that, but a lot of people say, oh, this is great. You can fit it in your pocket. I wouldn't put a camera in my pocket, but it's something that won't take up a lot of space in a camera bag or a sling bag or a travel bag or something like that where you might want to Take it out quickly, get a couple of shots, and then pop it back in a bag. This is a bit of a learning curve for me. I typically use my cameras for a quick vlog. So to do something more sophisticated, to take more photography-focused shots, I'm very slowly getting into that. But I personally bought this device for vlogging, for video, to take something a little bit more sophisticated, to be able to do 4K, to have interchangeable lenses, to have a full-frame sensor, I didn't mention the full frame sensor, but that's the other bonus. Smaller camera, full frame. This might be one of the smallest cameras with a full frame option. So altogether, so far I'm very pleased with the package. Uh, another thing that people seem to mention is, oh, you might have some troubles putting a big lens on this camera. Uh, again, from the previous videos that I posted, I have a Tamron 28 to 75. I made a typo. I'm sure someone's gonna call me out on that. I did mess up. 
but uh, and I also misspelled deity. I put the I before the E, and it was not after a C. So <laughs> the Tamron was fine. The 16 to 35 f/4 Sony lens that's also kind of beefy. It was fine. No major issues there. So if you're worried about bigger lenses being on this camera, it's fine. It feels fine. Uh, obviously the weight shifts a little bit to the front if you're a balanced focus person, which I wasn't until I had to deal with the gimbal situation. But a slightly bigger camera is not going to change that. So uh, again, not trying to be uh, someone that defends the device. Sony basically made this device for someone like me. Someone who wants to do videos, someone who has the pop out. You have the full frame if you want those options. Um, I know a lot of people online are hypothesizing that maybe Sony might do away with the micro sensor cameras, the A6000 line. I don't know. Again, I like the 5100, and that's an old camera. I think that thing is great. That one's super small, and that's something that you really could pop into your pocket. I'm glad to be a part of one ecosystem now, again, because I had an Olympus camera, I had a Panasonic camera, I had a Sony camera. I'm glad to have one grouping of lenses now that are somewhat interchangeable. As I've been educating myself, a lot of people say online and through these vlogs and other reviews, you're really buying into the ecosystem. The physical body that you're buying in this particular instance is less of a... It's less of the decision. It's more of, are you going to go with Sony cameras, Sony lenses, because you may be popping out bodies, but then you're going to have this arsenal of lenses and arsenal of glass that you'll use for a really long time. So, I've landed on Sony. I really like this body. I'm glad to use it. I'm glad that I have an option now that I've made this investment in all of this glass. I'm glad that I could potentially go out and maybe get some other cameras that fill other purposes. I could see myself doing that. Again, if I get more into photography, maybe I'll buy a used A7 II or something like that, which apparently takes great photography, uh, takes great shots, but it doesn't do the best video. One thing I actually am a little bit upset with, I wish that Sony in 2020 would have made this camera have 4K at 120 frames per second. That would have been cool for slow-mo shots, but 1080p is fine. Okay, so that's all I have for now. Again, I felt that I should put together a legitimate video to give some feedback, some ideas about what I'm experiencing with the camera so far, uh, because people are watching, and, and I get it, because this is a brand new camera, there's not a lot of information out about it. Uh, one other bit of advice, or information if you will, I personally opted to buy an official secondary battery from Sony. Um, I read a lot of those reviews that some of these third-hand batteries, you start to get these weird alerts, and the memory card can get corrupted if the battery runs out. So um, I got scared. I bought the official battery. Yes, it's expensive. Um, and so I have two batteries and one charger, and I can switch them back and forth. But uh, all of my goofing around yesterday, I dropped the battery down to about 70%. So I probably filmed for about uh, 35, 40 minutes. And I had the camera on while I was framing shots. Not that I'm that talented, because I really don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, but I did try to set up some shots to some degree. Very unflattering shots with my double chin. Anyway, I will be filming outside as soon as the weather and time permits. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at Joey Lombardi. I appreciate your interest in this camera, and I know it's not for me. I know it's for the camera. And uh, hopefully there's some people out there that are buying this camera right now and have their own impressions and suggestions on setting up uh, settings and stuff like that. Uh, again, I don't do anything creative or interesting with the settings. I try to keep it as vanilla as possible. Um, I had some very bad experiences with my G7 when I started to get creative. Everything looked washed out from an ISO perspective. So, so far, so good. It doesn't seem too washed out. I like the natural palette that comes out of the box. Um, as I get more trained on how to use this camera, I might get more creative. But for now, it's vanilla. It's all vanilla, baby. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon.